The term semiconductor has become synonymous with the technology that powers our daily lives, especially in the years since the pandemic. From smartphones to computers to automobiles, household appliances, it's no doubt that semiconductors are the heart of modern electronics. They've also been the topic du jour in the overall electronics industry since the pandemic for reasons that we're gonna soon explore. But oftentimes, in my opinion, conversations surrounding the semiconductor industry fail to fully outline what that industry actually is and how it's integrated into the overall electronics landscape. So today, we're going to answer the question, what is the semiconductor industry? Then we're gonna go even deeper to explore whether or the hype about the semiconductor industry that it is the most critical one in the modern electronics landscape is actually valid. We're going to do this by outlining the semiconductor manufacturing process, examining semiconductors impact on the electronics industry, and analyzing the current state of the semiconductor landscape. That's what we're talking about today. Let's gear up and dive in. Let's start this thing out with the most obvious place. What is a semiconductor? Well, a semiconductor is a material that has electrical conductivity between conductors and non-conductors. That was uh, pretty easy. So thanks so much for tuning into this video. My name's been Joel. This has been Octopart. I'll see you next time. Oh. You're still here. Um, well, I got nothing else to do, so let me elaborate further. Typically, the conductive material is some kind of metal, and the non-conductive material is something like a ceramic or an insulator like glass. Insulator in this case refers to the fact that the electrons in the material are pretty tightly bound, and therefore they can't move around very much. This makes it non-conductive. The intermediate conductivity between the conductive and the non-conductive material is what makes semiconductors incredibly useful in electronic devices. Silicon, a naturally occurring element, is the most commonly used semiconductor material due to its abundance and its ideal properties for this task. Semiconductors have unique characteristics that allow them to control the flow of electricity in electronic circuits. By introducing impurities into something like pure silicon, a process which is known as doping, manufacturers can manipulate the electrical properties of semiconductors to create either P-type or N-type materials. These two types of semiconductors are then combined to form the building blocks of most electronics devices, diodes, transistors, and integrated circuits. Now, semiconductors can be classified into two main types based off of the type of impurities added during that doping process. Intrinsic semiconductors are pure forms of semiconductors without any significant impurities. The electrical conductivity in intrinsic semiconductors is relatively low. Low. Silicon and germanium are examples of intrinsic semiconductors. On the other hand, extrinsic semiconductors are semiconductors that have been doped with impurities to improve their conductivity, and there are two subtypes of extrinsic semiconductors. N-type semiconductors are doped with elements that have more valence electrons than the semiconductor material. So for example, doping silicon with Phosphorus, which has five valence electrons, creates an n-type semiconductor. The extra electron facilitates electrical conductivity. P-type semiconductors are doped with elements that have fewer valence electrons. Doping silicon with boron, for example, which has three valence electrons, creates a P-type semiconductor. This introduces holes or positive charge carriers that enhance conductivity. So now that we generally know what a semiconductor is, let's explore how they're made. Now, if you couldn't tell by the last few minutes of this video, the manufacturing of semiconductors is pretty complex. It's a multi-step process. It involves the transformation of raw materials into highly sophisticated electronic components. But here is the most simplified breakdown of the semiconductor manufacturing process that I can muster 
at the moment. First, wafer preparation. The process begins with the creation of a silicon wafer. Silicon is melted and formed into a large cylindrical ingot, which is then sliced into thin wafers. These wafers serve as a substrate for building semiconductor devices. The wafer undergoes photolithography, where light is used to transfer patterns onto the surface. This process involves coating the wafer with a light-sensitive material, exposing it to ultraviolet light through a mask, and developing a pattern by removing exposed areas. Then there's doping. To alter the electrical properties of the silicon wafer, impurities are added through a process called ion implementation. This step is crucial for defining that n-type and p-type different regions of those two types within the semiconductor. Then you've got deposition. So thin layers of various materials are deposited onto the wafer to form different components of an electronic circuit. This can be done using techniques such as chemical vapor deposition or CVD or physical vapor deposition or PVD. Next up there's etching. So unwanted material has got to be removed. And we do this using chemical or plasma etching techniques. This allows for really precise shaping of the semiconductor components. Finally, we arrive at packaging, which is a whole can of worms that Zach Peterson talks about on the On Track podcast at Frontal Team Academy all the time. Check that out if you have not already. So once the semiconductor devices are formed, they have to be packaged to protect them from environmental factors and to facilitate their integration into electron components. And this isn't as simple as just like throwing it in a box. <laughs> There's a lot of very specific things that go on during the packaging process. It's a whole industry in and of itself. The entire process of semiconductor fabrication is really, really intricate, and it requires clean room environments to prevent contamination. It is this complexity that underscores the significance of the semiconductor industry in modern electronics. Joel here. I hope you are as intrigued and fascinated to continue going on, learning more about semiconductors. We're getting into the manufacturing process even deeper. We're about to talk about semiconductors in the electronics industry. But before we get there, do me a little bit of a favor, and if you like what you see here, go ahead and show us some love by liking and subscribing to the channel. I would say here normally, leave your thoughts in the comments below, but pro tip, I'm going to make a pretty juicy claim near the end of this video, so maybe just save your really smart, clever comments for that. Just saying. Back to the video. Okay, so we got a good primer here for what a semiconductor is, how it's made, now, let's talk a little bit about the impact they've had and continue to have on the electronics industry. Semiconductors, don't really need to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway so we're all on the same page. They've revolutionized the electronics landscape, enabling the development of smaller, faster, more efficient electronic devices. Here's how semiconductors impact various sectors generally. In consumer electronics, semiconductors are the absolute backbone. They power devices such as smartphones, tablets, laptops, smart home appliances, the list goes on and on and on and on. The continuous improvement in semiconductor technology has led to more powerful processors, better displays, and enhanced connectivity features, which leads to all modern consumer electronics pretty much. For processors in smartphones, it allows them to perform tasks that once required dedicated computers, including gaming, high definition video editing, and much more. Modern vehicles rely heavily on semiconductors for engine control units, infotainment systems, and advanced driver assistance systems, and electric vehicle components. The push toward autonomous driving and electrification has further increased the demand for specialized automotive semiconductors. So features like adaptive cruise control, for instance, which you may have in your car if you've got it in the last five or six years or so, lane keeping assistance, the beep, 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 beep that happens when you swerve outside the lane, automatic braking, which keeps you from flying out the windshield, all these things and many more are made possible by sophisticated semiconductor technologies. In industrial settings, semiconductors are used in automation, robotics, manufacturing processes, and way, way, way more. They enable precise control and monitoring of equipment, leading to increased efficiency and productivity. Industrial IoT devices powered by semiconductors allow for real-time data collection and analysis optimizing operations and reducing downtime. And again, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm saying that about all of these points. Just a general primer here 
of how semiconductors have impacted these various industries. In healthcare, semiconductors play a crucial role in medical devices such as diagnostic equipment, imaging systems, wearable health monitors. They literally save hundreds of thousands, millions of lives every single day. The ability to process and analyze large amounts of data quickly is absolutely vital for modern healthcare solutions. For example, Semiconductor technology enables portable and non-invasive devices like glucose monitors, cardiac monitors, uh, and other types of monitoring devices that all enhance patient care and monitoring and make things really, really fast, really efficient, and remove the burden of having to get that data from employees doctors, nurses, etc. In telecommunications, the rollout of 5G networks has significantly increased the demand for semiconductors that support high-speed data transmission and connectivity. Semiconductors enable the infrastructure required for seamless communication across the entire globe. The development of 5G is set to completely revolutionize industries by enabling faster data speeds, lower latency, and greater connectivity among devices. All of this powered by semiconductor technology. And then you've got the list of emerging technologies. Semiconductors are pivotal in the advancement of emerging tech, such as AI, uh, virtual reality, Internet of Things, which we've already talked about a little bit today, IoT. Uh, AI processes, for instance, rely heavily on semiconductors for executing complex algorithms really complex algorithms and data processing tasks. VR headsets use semiconductors to render immersive experiences while IoT devices depend on semiconductors for connectivity and data management. Now let's talk about the industry a little bit. The semiconductor industry has faced several challenges in recent years, it's been in the news a lot, most notably the global semiconductor shortage. Now this shortage was exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, which disrupted supply chains and increased demand for electronic devices as people all over the world shifted to remote work, online learning, and staying at home with their smart devices more and more. The automotive sector was hit particularly hard. This led to production delays and increased costs across the board. Now, several factors contributed to the semiconductor shortage. First was full capacity utilization. Now, prior to the pandemic, semiconductor manufacturing facilities were operating at near full capacity. The sudden surge in demand outpaced the industry's ability to scale up production quickly, and this really did highlight the need for greater flexibility and capacity planning in the semiconductor supply chain. Next, for sure, geopolitical tensions played a role Trade restrictions and sanctions, particularly between the U.S. and China, led to hoarding and increased pressure on the supply chain. These tensions underscored the importance of developing more localized, diversified supply chains to mitigate risks. Long lead times were also a factor here. Building new semiconductor fabrication facilities or fabs is a time-consuming capital intensive process, as I'm sure you could guess by this point in the video, it often takes several years to complete it. And the complexity of semiconductor manufacturing, coupled with the high cost of equipment and infrastructure, poses challenges for rapid expansion. Now, despite these challenges, the semiconductor industry presents significant opportunities for growth and innovation. First, there's technological advancement. Now, the industry continues to push the boundaries of what is possible with semiconductors, including developing smaller, faster, more energy efficient chips. Innovations in material science especially offer new possibilities for improving semiconductor performance. Next, let's talk growing demand. The demand for semiconductors is expected to rise, as you can probably tell by this point, in tandem with the growth of emerging technologies such as AI, IoT, electric vehicles, etc., etc. The increasing integration of semiconductors into everyday life presents vast opportunities for market expansion. Now, investment and expansion is interesting because many governments and companies are investing already pretty heavily in semiconductor manufacturing capabilities to secure their supply chains and foster innovation. For example, initiatives like the United States CHIPS Act, which we talked about a whole bunch here on this channel, aimed to boost domestic semiconductor production and reduce reliance on foreign sources. This is happening all over the world. In India, this happened really recently. By the way, if you're as interested as I am in the semiconductor industry, check out this video where I really go in depth about all of the challenges the semiconductor industry is currently facing. All right, so now we have a good overview of what a semiconductor is, how it's made, semiconductor landscape broadly, what challenges and opportunities the semiconductor industry is facing. Let's go ahead and get back to our original question. 
is the semiconductor industry the most critical one in modern electronics? Well, given its pervasive influence across various sectors and its role in driving technological advancement, it is arguably one of the most critical industries, not just in electronics, but in the entire world. Semiconductors are the building blocks of the digital age. They enable devices and systems that power nearly every aspect of modern life. And as we look to the future, the importance of semiconductors will only continue to grow. With ongoing innovation and investment, semiconductors will remain at the forefront of technological process, shaping the way we live, the way we work, the way we interact with the world around us. So the semiconductor industry is not just critical, it is indispensable to the continued evolution of modern electronics. That is why major world leaders and the economies that they are responsible for safeguarding are all turning toward the semiconductor industry because they understand just how important it is. So as all global industries become increasingly interconnected and reliant on digital technology, semiconductors will continue to drive innovation and unlock new possibilities. From enabling smarter cities to advancing healthcare solutions, the impact of semiconductors extends far beyond consumer electronics or beyond any speculation that I can even come up with today. That's how integral and rapidly uh, evolving they really are. So to put it plainly, put a fine point on it, Yes, the semiconductor industry is, in my opinion, the most important one in all of electronics. And it's also one of the most important in the entire world, period. As we continue to witness the rapid evolution of technology, I promise you the semiconductor industry will remain its driving force, empowering us to explore new frontiers, create more connected and sustainable future. You can take all your news stories about AI, you can take all your news stories about augmented reality, and take all your news stories about all that stuff, I guarantee you, without the evolution in semiconductors, none of that is gonna matter. But what do you think? Do I have this completely wrong? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I can't wait to hear what you think. I've been Joel, this has been Octopart. See you next time.